नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल ना द इजराइल हमास कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इज एक्चुअली टर्निंग डेंजरस टिल डेट थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड पीपल हैव लॉस देयर लाइफ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट एंड आई विल ट्राई एंड एक्सप्लेन टू यू वाई आई थिंक दिस इज डेंजरस लेट्स गेट राइट टू दिस शो Now, like I said, one thousand one hundred people lost their lives, according to the Israeli armed forces. Almost seven hundred Israeli men, women, and children lost their lives. According to Gaza, four hundred of their people lost their lives. Now, mind you, this is uh, one of the biggest losses that Israelis had after the Israel Arab War in nineteen seventy-three. so israelis are not taking this lightly and they are not going to take this lightly in fact this is what uh, benjamin netanyahu had to say just hear this azakh israel anahu bemilkhama lo bemivtsa lo besvavim bemilkhama aboker hamas patakh bemitkafet petar atsanik neged medinat israel ve neged azakhia anahu betokh ze mishot aboker amukdamot kinasi et rashe maraket abitakhon הנחיתי קודם כל לטהר את היישובים מהמחבלים שחדרו פנימה, הפעולה הזאת מתבצעת בשעות הללו. במקביל הוריתי לבצע גיוס מילואים נרחב ולהשיב מלחמה שערה בעוצמה ובהיקף שהאויב לא הכיר. האויב ישלם מחיר שהוא לא ידע כמותו. אני קורא בינתיים לכל אזרחי ישראל להישמע בקפדנות להנחיות הצבא, להנחיות פיקוד העורף. אנחנו במלחמה ואנחנו ננצח בה. Now, uh, the reason I say that uh, this could take a very dangerous turn is because somewhere down the line, all of a sudden the world seems to be divided, clearly divided, one for uh, Israel and uh, almost for Israel, as in you know playing safe but almost supporting Israel, and the other side for Palestine, yeah? and uh, someone most some of them almost supporting. or passively supporting palestine but end of the day the world has been divided now let us hear some world views then we will go further into this analysis now the first thing is uh, i want to i want you to hear what joe biden said just hear this today the people of israel are under attack orchestrated by a terrorist organization hamas in this moment of tragedy i want to say to them and to the world and to terrorists everywhere But the United States stands with Israel. We will not ever fail to have their back. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. You know, the world's seen appalling images. Thousands of rockets in a space of hours raining down on Israeli cities. When I got up this morning, I started this at 7.38 o'clock, my calls. Hamas terrorists crossing in Israel, killing not only Israeli soldiers, but Israeli civilians in the street in their homes innocent people murdered wounded entire families taken hostage by Hamas just days after Israel marked the holiest of days in the Jewish calendar is unconscionable you know when i spoke with prime minister netanyahu this morning i told him the united states stands with the people of israel in the face of these terrorist assaults israel has the right to defend itself and its people full stop There's never justification for terrorist attacks. And my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. Let me say this as clearly as I can. This is not a moment for any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. The world is watching. I've also been in contact with the King of Jordan, spoken with members of Congress, directed my national security team to engage with their Israeli counterparts. military to military intelligence to intelligence dipl- diplomat to diplomat to make sure israel has what it needs we're going to remain in close touch with prime minister i personally am going to remain in close contact with prime minister netanyahu as this situation continues to develop and let there be no mistake the united states stands with the state of israel just as we have from the moment the united states became the first nation to recognize Israel 11 minutes after its founding 75 years ago 
mind you here joe biden is not just saying that you know we stand with them or you know uh, we are we are concerned or or or, or we we condemn uh, palestine for to doing this and all that that's not what he's saying he's saying we will stand to the nail with you he's saying we will assist you in any way you want which also could mean military assistance so that's what uh, biden said now um, rishi sunak the uk prime minister almost said the same he said he said um, the scenes we have seen in israel over last 36 hours are truly horrifying i spoke to prime minister netanyahu earlier today to assure him of uk's steadfast support as israelis defend itself against these attacks terrorism will not prevail again please see the words chosen they are steadfast with israel which means that if need be they will give whatever assistance including military assistance to israel if need be macron from france said the same emmanuel macron said that i spoke with president herzog and prime minister netanyahu i condemn terrorist attack from gaza against israel its soldiers and citizens france stands by israel and the israelis adheres to their security and their right to defend themselves this is what macron said now let's go to germany germany too pledged its support to israel where they said we stand unwaveringly by your side israel i at netanyahu personally assured this today the security of israel is german reasons of state my thoughts are with those in israel whose women men and children have been killed or injured this is what germany had to say the italian prime minister meloni said that she had a telephonic conversation today with the prime minister of the state of israel benjamin netanyahu president meloni reiterated the italian government's full solidarity for the attacks suffered and its closeness to the family of the victims to the hostages and the injured the government will work with international partners to coordinate support italy stands by the israeli people in this difficult time in fact mr narendra modi the indian prime minister our prime minister also said that deeply shocked by the news of terror attack in israel our thoughts and prayers are with the innocent victims of their family we stand in solidarity with israel at this difficult hour fumio kishida the the japanese president said hamas and other palestinian militant attacks israel from gaza yesterday japan strongly condemns the attack which severely harmed innocent civilians i express my condolences to the bereaved family and heartfelt sympathies to the injured justin trudeau of canada said canada unequivocally condemns hamas barbaric brutal attack and reaffirms its support for israel's right to defend itself we also call for the immediate release of those being held hostages we demand that they be treated in accordance to the international law now this is one side of the world that i just showed you now let's look at the other side of the world the other side of the world the iranian president raisi backs palestinians in fact president ibrahim raisi said on sunday that iran supports the legitimate defense of the palestinian nation raisi said he said the zionist regime that is israel the zionist regime and its supporters are responsible for endangering the security of nations in the region and they must be held accountable in this matter he urged muslim governments to support the palestinian nation while praising the resistance effort by hamas and islamic jihad as well as in countries including syria lebanon and iraq this is what president raisi had to say this is what iran had to say now let's look at iraq iraq says years of injustice led by palestinian operations in israel government spokesperson basim al awadi called on the international community to stop the injustice done to palestinian people and to intervene to restore the rights of palestinian al awadi warned that the escalation and continuation of the tension in palestinian region will have negative repercussions on the region he also called for an extraordinary meeting of arab league this is what the 
Iraq, spokesperson had to say. Now let's go to Jordan. In a telephonic conversation, the king of Jordan had with the Egyptian president, he warned of the repercussions of a prolonged conflict that could have on the regional security. Pakistan caretaker foreign minister Jalil Abbas Jilani said that Pakistan is deeply concerned by the escalating hostility in the Middle East and the loss of innocent lives. We stand in solidarity with the Palestinians and call for an immediate end of violence and oppression by Israel's occupation force. A viable and sovereign state of Palestine must be established on the basis of pre-1967 border of UN resolution. The international community needs to intervene to bring an end to this conflict. Protect civilians. Work towards lasting peace in Middle East. This is what Pakistan had to say. Just keep this in mind. I'm going to come back to this later on in my uh, editorial. Qatar had to say the same thing. Qatar, which was starkly opposed to normalization with Israel, expressed deep concern over the development of Gaza Strip. So Qatar also was never with Israel. They also uh, expressed their deep concern uh, with whatever is happening. Turkey to the same. Turkey also uh, on Saturday strongly condemned the loss of civilian lives in the conflict between Israel and Palestinians saying that it is ready to help de-escalate the situation before it spreads across nationwide. Kuwait, the foreign minister in a statement called the international community to stop provocating practices of occupation uh, and uh, the policy of expanding settlements, again, more or less uh, leaning towards uh, Palestine. Egypt, which normalized with Israel in 1980 under the peace treaty, warned of grave consequences from escalation in tension between Israel and Palestine in a statement from the foreign ministry carried out by the state news agency. Now, Lebanon's Hezbollah, Lebanon's Hezbollah praised Hamas for the heroic operation in a statement. Hezbollah congratulates the resisting Palestinian people and the Lebanese Shia movement said that the statement being hailed by Hamas and its arm wing, the Ezidin al Qassam brigade of the large scale heroic operations. So, this is what Syria too. Syria too said that, you know, uh, Syria also expressed support for Palestinian people and the forces fighting against Zionist terrorism. Uh, Yemen, Yemen also said that uh, the statement published on their website uh, said that. Uh, the Iranian aligned militant groups said to attack revealed weaknesses. It called the operation a battle of dignity and pride and defense. Now, this is where it stands. Before I get into my conclusion and uh, what I see this, how I see this growing, let me give you a brief uh, history of Israeli Palestine conflict. At the end of First World War, Palestine was among the several former Ottoman Arab territories which were made mandated territories by the League of Nations. Now, all but one of these mandated territories categorized as A mandates whose independence was provisionally recognized became fully independent states as anticipated. The exception was Palestine, where instead of being limited to the rendering of administrative assistance and advice, the mandate had a primary aim, the implementation of Balfour Declaration issued by the British government in 1917, conveying that government support of the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. This commitment was included in the Mandate of Palestine, formerly allotted in 1922 to Great Britain by the League of Nations, without having ascertained the wishes of Palestine people as required by the covenant. This is more or less where the problem began. Now, during the 25 years of Palestine mandate from 1922 to 1947, large-scale Jewish immigration from abroad, mainly from Eastern Europe, took place. The numbers swelling in the 1930s with the notorious Nazi pers persecution of Jews over this period, the Jewish population in Palestine composed principally of immigrant increased from less than 10% in 1970 to 30% in 1947. Palestinians' demand for independence and resistance to Jews' immigration led to the rebellion of 1937. Following by continuing terrorism and violence from both sides, during and immediately after the Second World War, Great Britain, as the mandatory power, tried to implement various formulas bringing independence to the land 
ravaged by violence. A partition scheme, a formula for a provincial autonomy, a unified independent Palestine were all considered and abandoned. And in 1947, Great Britain, in frustration, turned the problem over to United Nations. Now, in November 1947, the United Nations voted to partition the British mandate. This is something that you will be hearing a lot more in the near future, in a lot of debates, a lot of discussion. I will repeat, in 1947, the United Nations voted to partition the British mandate of Palestine into Jewish states and an Arab state. Clashes broke out almost immediately between Jews and Arabs in Palestine. The British troops prepared to withdraw from Palestine's conflict continued to escalate. With both Jews and Arabs forces committing belligerence. Among the most infamous event was the attack on Arab village of Deir Yassin on April 9th, 1948. The news of a brutal massacre there by Irgun, Luimi and Stern Gang forces spread widely and inspired both panic and retaliation. Days after Arab force attack, a Jewish convoy headed for Hadassah Hospital killing 78. Now this is what the Arab-Israeli conflict was, a gist of it. And this is how it all began. Now the reason I say that this can take a very dangerous turn. Without making this more boring and dragging, what I want to tell you is there are a couple of things that needs to be bothered about. You see, Ukraine and Russia was different. Ukraine and Russia was different, but here things are different. Things are different because the world has is seen as divided as to the, the Islamic countries, the Muslim countries and the West. Primarily that and maybe this can be the Islamic country and then the non-Islamic country. It can grow to that. Countries like Pakistan who are nuclear armed countries. They are in their lowest today, lowest. If countries like Iran and other rich Islamic countries provoke a country like Pakistan, Pakistan could commit some stupidity in the region. They could. So the fact remains that this may therefore lead to a situation where it is Islamic country versus the others. And a lot of countries, because either directly or indirectly, will have to support one of these factions. And is seen as supporting one of these factions currently. Most of the countries are. And that's why I say this could be, uh, this could have larger repercussions. Not only limiting to the region where this is being operated, but larger repercussions when it comes to the world. That's the point I wanted to make uh, today. And that's why I thought I will uh, uh, talk on this particular subject. Meanwhile, I hope and pray that this uh, comes to an end soon. This conflict comes to an end soon. And uh, we see better sins prevail in the region. Till I see you next time. That's tomorrow at 10. Namaskar.